Here we are with video five, maybe the last one, we'll see, of uh, nutrition and metabolism. So we move to the liver, okay? So your liver does a lot for you. Uh, you're aware of it being the destination of where the blood from your digestive system goes via the hepatic portal system. That's pretty uh, established. But it does a ton of things that we haven't even talked about and we're just barely going to scratch the surface of. Lots and lots of plasma proteins, lots and lots of... Uh, anabolic and catabolic reactions occur there. Uh, anyway, over 500 different functions. So lots of these genesis and lysis type reactions, as you see. Uh, importantly for this chapter, anyway, it, uh, it makes a lot of cholesterol. We always think of cholesterol coming from our diet, and it does. We can get uh, more or less cholesterol, depending on what we eat. But uh, you're genetically... Uh, programmed to make your own cholesterol. So some people tend to run high and some people tend to run low based on your on your family history and your uh, particular condition. So let's look at cholesterol. Uh, the total cholesterol levels in your blood, that's counting HDLs and LDLs, high density lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins. We'll get to that in a minute. But the total cholesterol should be about 200 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. In the book, it says one uh, deciliter, but nobody uses that. So we'll say 100 milliliters. Um, and if you can keep it below that, you're good. Okay, so it says of this is good. So, but I mean below. Uh, HDLs are actually the good ones. So high density lipoproteins are ones that will kind of... Uh, protect you against cardiovascular vascular disease, especially if you get them at very high levels. So you want 40 uh, milligrams per 100 mils to 60 or even more, right? So if your numbers, if you're getting your cholesterol checked then you're at 70 milligrams of HDLs per 100 mils, you're doing pretty good. LDLs, you want to keep low. So keep high, high, keep low, low. The low density lipoproteins, uh, also known as bad cholesterol, you want to get uh, below 160 milligrams per 100 mils. Uh, even lower is better, right? The numbers have changed over the years. Uh, I remember having a target point for 100 milligrams per 100 mils. So the lower you can keep those, the better off you are. Um, here's a little finishing list of things that happen in the liver. Switching slides. All right. Let's talk about energy in, energy out. So you take in energy from your food. Uh, that contains these, you know, they're not, they're not things. Calories aren't things. Calories are units of energy. So certain foods have more uh, energy in them than others. Uh, fats have a very high uh, ratio of calories to grams. And uh, proteins and carbohydrates slightly less. Anyway, so you take in a certain amount of calories over the day. 60% of this is basically lost as heat pretty much right away because you have to conduct all these reactions. If you remember the, uh, the second law of thermodynamics states that, that the universe is heading towards entropy. So you're actually creating heat out of all of these stored forms of energy and we're no different. Uh, the rest of it we can use. We can actually collect that the rest of those organic molecules and use uh, for whatever purposes we have later. I'm shooing the cat out of here. He's not going to make a appearance, I hope. All right, where am I? If you tend to take in too much, too many calories compared to how many you, you uh, use, you're going to gain weight. If you uh, take in too few calories, you're going to lose weight. But over time, if you stay at a you know fairly stable weight, you're gonna these two are going to equal each other. Nobody gets heavier and heavier and heavier forever. Nobody gets thinner and thinner and thinner forever, uh, barring the f that you might die from either of those. So let's look at what happens when the dis disequilibrium tends towards having too many calories taken in. One measurement is called the body mass index. And you guys have seen these body mass indices before. Here's a little program for it, or uh, formula, sorry. Your weight in pounds divided by your height in inches squared. That'll give you a number that'll be in the 20s probably somewhere. And if you're below 25, they say that's an expected uh, normal weight. Between 25 and 30 BMI, that's overweight. And over 30, they classify that as 
obese. Now, depending on your muscle mass and your fat body fat percentages, that's going to mean more or less. If you're 225 pounds and all muscle, uh, you, it's going to be, you know, not as bad for you if you're 225 pounds and, uh, you know, 45% body fat. So keep those, you know, take it with a grain of salt. All right. Well, what controls our calorie intake or energy intake? Uh, a couple of things. Your blood levels of things, blood glucose levels, amino acids, fatty acids, and the hormone insulin combined or additionally with a high body temperature. These things are all going to decrease hunger. So if you have a lot of blood sugar, just think about how this works. You get a lot of blood sugar. That means that you've probably eaten recently, right? You've got enough of these carbohydrates in your blood that you don't need to resupply them. Same thing works with these guys. And you might remember that insulin is produced after you eat to try and pack away some of those uh, food uh, molecules. Uh, hunger is increased by kind of the opposite. So I say high this and high body temperature decrease hunger and vice versa. So low blood levels of these and low body temperature are going to increase hunger. Uh, glucagon and epinephrine are two hormones that will also help you increase hunger. And where else am I? And then your psychological state. So some people eat when they're depressed or some people don't eat when they're angry or whatever. So those can affect it uh, significantly as well. Last slide, uh, metabolic rate and heat production. So you've heard of your metabolic rate and metabolism. I started off with this section here talking about it. Well, your BMR is really that measure that people use when they're talking about how easy it is or how difficult it is for them to gain or lose weight. So your basal metabolic rate, this is how many calories you consume per meter squared of body surface area, which is kind of an odd thing, but that's how big you are per hour. Now, kcals, these are, these are your normal dietary calories. So you can just equate these to the calorie you see on your uh, cereal box or soda can or whatever. So you have to be at rest. You have to be in a post-absorptive state. So no, you, you haven't just eaten. And you have to be in a comfortable temperature. And so you'll, you can measure this. There's different ways to measure it. But if you are thinner, younger, male, stressed, high body temperature, high environment, uh, room temperature and body temperature and uh, high growth hormone, sorry, uh, thyroid hormone levels, you are going to have a higher basal metabolic rate. So when I was young, I had a super high BMR, uh, couldn't gain weight at all, like paper thin skin. Of course, I'm no longer younger and I try not to be stressed and uh, I'm probably not that much thinner anymore. But so it's a lot you know, easier for me to gain weight. My BMR has probably gone down. You can compensate for that somewhat with your total metabolic rate. This is all of your activities. So this is exercise. This is something you really want to do. If you exercise regularly, your overall calorie consumption is going to go way up. You're also going to be, generally speaking, consuming more calories at rest because you're going to have more muscle. So if you've got more muscle, you consume more calories even when you're sleeping. So exercise will not only uh, increase your total metabolic rate during that period, but it will uh, overall increase your calorie consumption. So exercise is, you know, it's not easy if you're doing it right, okay? But you know, you got to do it. So I strongly encourage you to include exercise rather than just dieting if you want to lose weight. Lastly, body temperature regulation. We run about at about 37 degrees centigrade, which is like 98.6 Fahrenheit. Uh, the temperature tends to be highest sometime in the afternoon and lowest right when you wake up, with your core being a higher temperature than your body shell, your outer, your outer layers. How do we get heat in and out? Well, radiation, now this isn't radiation like, you know, radioactive. I'm just talking about radiant heat or conductive heat convective heat this is like this is the electromagnetic radiation of heat this is heat being leached off via touching or being absorbed so if you touch something say I put my hands on a hot cup of coffee uh, there's gonna be heat transfer from the coffee cup to my hands right so that'll warm up my hands that's that's how conduction works convection is going to be uh, where the heat is 
contained in, say, let's say the air around your skin, but then gets moved, the, the skin, the air, sorry, that air around your skin gets blown away. That's convective heat. And evaporation is how we always lose heat when we're, uh, when we're sweating. Counter that with shivering or an increase in your total metabolic rate, go running. Uh, if your thyroid hormone levels go up, and exercise can add uh, as well. Let's see here. Uh, cutaneous vasodilation. So this is in your skin and your blood vessels. If you want to lose heat, you're going to vasodilate your skin blood vessels. If you want to conserve heat, you're going to do the opposite, right? Uh, this says all decreased body heat and temperature. So what that means is that if you sweat or the skin blood vessels vasodilate or you just relax, your body temperature should go down. And lastly, just a little end note here. Fever, we've talked about it in the immune system, but it is kind of uh, controlled hyperthermia. So it's controlled too high of a temperature, and that is to fight infections of various sorts. Sorry about the kind of rambling state of this last text-heavy speech, but got to do what I got to do. And that's it.